everyone. Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos. In this video, we learn about the restrictions and the recommendations for table buffering. So this is a continuation video of the last two videos. Okay, so in the first video, we have learned about the buffering of tables. In the second video, we have learned about how the synchronization happens, local buffer synchronization. So here we learn about the restrictions and the recommendations for table buffering. So first point is only transparent tables and pool tables can be buffered. The cluster tables cannot be buffered. So the restrictions on table buffering is that the tables which are where modifications are less than 1% are only to be buffered. So only the this transparent pool and cluster tables are nothing but the different data types of the tables. Okay. So only transparent and Pool tables are buffered. The cluster tables, they cannot be buffered. The following two points speak against table buffering. The data read by the application must always be up to date. Delays caused by synchronization mechanism cannot be accepted. Okay, so uh, you can refer to my last video, synchronization of local buffers. That is uh, performance tuning part 4B where we have discussed how synchronization of local uh, buffers happen. Okay, so in between each synchronization, except for the application server on which the program was run and the data was changed in the local buffer, all other application server local buffers have old data until the next synchronization program executes. Okay, so within this time, if you run any program, you will, be, will get wrong results on all other application servers. Okay, so this is the main disadvantage. Second thing is the table data is frequently modified. In this case, the cost of synchronization could be greater than the gain in performance resulting from buffering. We do not recommend you to buffer a table if more than 1% of the access to the table are modifying access. That's what. So why we are using the concept of buffering to the read from the database is higher. It involves IO. Okay. So in the first video of uh, first and second videos of this performance tuning part one and two, we have learned about the different response times. Okay. So in that database time, okay, the time sent from starting from the time when a request is sent to the database and it's we get the value from the database is the database time. Okay, that's very high. So to prevent the database reads and uh, whatever uh, you know access we have kept introduced this buffer in the sap system okay if there are so many modifying access then every time you have to go and access the database okay and all the other application servers okay when the synchronization program runs even their data has to be invalidated and again reloaded from the database so that makes no sense we are not reducing the database calls that's why we have to buffer the tables only where the modifying access are less than 1%. If the modifying accesses are more than 1%, there is no point to buffer such tables. Okay. So these are the main constraints. So that's why only the transparent tables and the pool tables are buffered. The cluster tables cannot be buffered. The table containing currency exchange rates is updated only once a day, but it is read frequently. Buffering is recommended in this case. This is a classic example. If you take the currency exchange rates table, it's only modified once a day, hardly once a day. Okay, but there are so many th reads on that, thousands of reads on that. Okay, so that's why this table is a candidate for buffering. Okay, we have to buffer such tables and not the tables where the modifications are more. Typical candidates for buffering include customizing and system tables. In certain cases, master data with customizing character can also be buffered. So uh, generally we buffer the customizing tables. Customizing tables means the data where it's cross client, it's it's same okay and the system tables these system tables and this customizing data are hardly modified 
mostly the repository data is frequent frequently modified so that's why we buffer cp suggests to buffer the customizing at system tables okay and and in some cases even the master data with customizing character can also be buffered the contents of buffer tables are always not up to date in a distributed system right so but whatever table we have buffered okay see like some point of time data is changed in that case only on the local buffer where uh, on the application server where that program is executed that has up to date okay and all other application servers buffers have old data until the synchronization happens so that's why there is a big damage that uh, there is a chance that if we run the program on any other application server where the table buffers are yet to be synchronized they will still show old data so you can bypass the buffer and read the data directly from the database with the abap command select whatever it is by bypassing buffer if a buffer table is accessed frequently with this command you must consider whether it is really necessary for the table to be buffered or whether it's essential to have the current state of the database okay so, so in some cases you can where which are very you know data critical operations okay for such programs like even in that fraction of second if it reads some wrong value from the buffers which are yet to be synchronized on the application servers then it will impact your business a lot then such programs you can use this bypassing buffer but if you in all the programs if you use bypassing buffer then there is no concept of creating the buffer and putting it in between the database right so that's why we have to there are table buffering is good but only when it's really necessary for the tables which are read and modifying accesses are less it's very good so that's why sap kept the restriction that all the tables cannot be buffered only some tables can be buffered you must define whether and how a table is buffered in its technical settings okay for more information you can see the technical settings uh, from sc 11 okay and sc 14 okay so these two tables you can see the technical settings of a table okay so there we will define if a table can be buffered or not okay buffering of transparent database tables with key columns of the types df16 underscore dec df34 underscore dec df16 underscore raw df34 underscore raw is supported so buffering of the transparent tables with the key columns of this type are supported okay so the main restrictions on on buffering are the data is not always up to date okay and second thing is like if we do frequent modifications then there is no point in buffering only okay so that's why only transparent and pool tables are buffered cluster tables cannot be buffered so sap has kept that restriction okay and then a good example is like the currency exchange rates table it's hardly modified it's always red so such tables can be buffered and select bypassing buffer this command you can use if you want to bypass the buffer and read the data directly from the database because you are afraid that even though in that fraction of seconds if i have executed my program on some application server where data is still old then it will give me wrong results and it will cause a huge impact to my business in such programs you can use bypassing buffer but if you use this in all programs then there is no point in buffering only okay and whether a table is uh, buffered or not where you will define that you will define in the technical settings okay so you can refer to the technical settings of the table se11 okay there you will come to know se14 okay these things okay the uh, abap workbench okay so there you can see whether the table is there we can define whether table can be buffered or not okay so this is about the restrictions and the recommendations for table buffering thank you